Welcome to our lecture online. Here we begin a new series, a new set of videos talking more about Coulomb's law, trying to get a more or a better understanding of the concept and of course we'll show you some real physics examples, some uh, problem examples where we see how the concept of Coulomb's law is of course ap uh, applied. But first let's try and understand the real concept here, the real meaning of Coulomb's law. Well, it all has to do with the fact that when objects are charged, either positively or negatively, they will interact with one another. They will either repel or attract. If both objects have the same charge, they will repel, and if they have opposite charges, they will attract. But why is that? Well, first of all, we have to realize that all objects are made of atoms. And it turns out that all atoms, except for one, hydrogen, is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Hydrogen doesn't have any neutrons, it just has a single proton and a single electron. So protons are the particles that are positively charged. Neutrons, by their name, they're neutral, they don't have any charge. And electrons, they're negatively charged. And these are typically the symbols used for these. Sometimes electrons are just simply uh, annotated with just a little negative sign. Neutrons sometimes a little circle around them indicating they're a particle that is neutral. And it turns out in atoms, the protons and the neutrons, they make up the nucleus of the atom. That is where all the protons and neutrons reside. It's a small little point in the middle of the atom where virtually all of the mass is at because the mass of a proton and neutron is almost 2,000 times the mass of an electron. So all the mass is located in the nucleus of the, of the atom. And that's, of course, where also all the positive charge is at. The negative charges, the electrons, they zip around the nucleus at quite high speeds uh, because they're attracted to the positive protons, but they somehow stay in a balance so that they don't crash into one another because after all they do attract one another. Now we have objects, since they're all made of positive and negative charges, it turns out that only the electrons can be transferred from one object to another. The protons are locked in the nucleus of the atoms and they can't be moved. So the electrons can be, can be moved around. And so you can add electrons to an object. And if you do, if there's more electrons than there are protons, then that object will become negatively charged. If you remove electrons, so now that there's an excess of protons versus electrons, then the object has a positive charge, is positively charged. So we can denote that by drawing an object, a random object, and by putting negative signs around it, what this indicates is that it has more negative charges than positive charges, and therefore the whole object becomes negatively charged. Here, by putting little pluses around it, we can indicate that we've removed some electrons, and therefore there's more protons than electrons in the object, and therefore the object becomes positively charged. We typically denote that the charges reside on the surface. That's the case with conductors. If they're insulators, then the charge can be distributed throughout the object. But with conductors, the charges, the excess charges, tend to reside near the surface. Now, we have to explain a little bit more later how that happens with the protons, since the protons can't move inside the object. They're, again, all locked inside the, um, inside the nuclei. But by m removing electrons, that means the surface has less electrons than the protons which are in the nuclei, which gives the surface of an object, therefore, more of a positive charge. Now, what happens when you have an object in space that's charged, positive charges tend to have an electric field around the object. Now, we don't quite know yet what an electric field is. We get to that a little bit, uh, little bit later when we talk about the, the videos in the electric field. But basically what it is, it's an influential sphere around the charged object. It changes space around it. And the best way to denote that is by drawing lines away from the positive charges. So there's an electric field around this, this, this object that's positively charged, showing electric field lines emanating away from the object. What that means is that the space around the object is changed somehow. We change space because space has what we call permittivity, call it the permittivity of free space constant. And because of that, 
by putting a, a, a charged object in space, it affects space around it in such a way that if you then take another small positive charge and place it in that sphere of influence, there will be a force of repulsion. This object that has a positive charge will be repelled by this object which has a positive charge. And so positive test charges placed in the sphere of influence of a charged object will either move away from the object if it's a positive charge, near positive charge, or will be attracted to the object if it's a negative charge placed there. With negative charge object, it's different. Here you can see that the arrows are drawn towards the object because it's negatively charged. So the sphere of influence has electric field lines pointing towards the object. And if you put a positive charge in that sphere of influence, it'll feel a force pulling it towards this object, what's negatively charged, or if it's a negative charge object, it will feel a force pushing it away from this other negatively charged object. And so the reason why they repel or attract one another is because charged objects influence the sphere around it in such a way that other objects that come within that sphere of influence will either feel that force of attraction or repulsion because the way the first object with that excess or lack of negative charges will affect the region around it. And so what, what that means is it affects the construct of space around the object in such a way that the other objects either get pushed away or get attracted because of that sphere of influence. And so that's the basic concept of Coulomb's law, and, or not quite the mathematical form of Coulomb's law, but at least the conceptual form of Coulomb's law. And later on we'll show you that there's an equation that actually can describe the strength of the forces experienced when you place charged objects close to one another. And that, of course, is the mathematical form of Coulomb's law. That's how we know.